Hello, this is Jeff Barkahani, the product manager for Wonderwear MES, and I'd like to give you a quick overview of the new MES web portal screen that we've delivered with Wonderwear MES 5.0. Um, I'm starting out here showing you the uh, main page. So when you come into the home page, you get these four main tiles, uh, assuming you have all rights, which I am in this one. You'll also notice up in the top right corner, I've got the username. So Wonderware MES Web Portal does use IIS authentication of your currently logged on user. And so that's my domain and user www. Um, also through this menu you can click it and if the page supports it, turn on or off auto refresh um, as well as access the online web help documentation. So the main page has the four tiles for the lines, entities, utilization, and work orders. Uh, first, I'll go through more of the operational type screens. So if I come in here as an operator using this system, what will I have the capabilities of doing? And so it would start out with he has the ability to view his lines, the entities within those lines, and work orders. Uh, the utilization one is a configuration screen setting. So we'll start with lines, and if you click on lines, you'll get an overview screen that will give you the list of what lines are configured in the system that the operator has access to. So in this case I have access to all my different packing lines. And in each line you can see what's currently um, been done. So currently I've got uh, work order running here. You can see the work order number running on pack line one. Um, it's supposed to create uh, 1500 bottles. Um, it's already produced those 1500 so its progress is showing 100 percent. Uh, the next one here is showing a little bit above that, so you can see the bar indicating that he's gone over the 100% mark. Um, we've got one over here that has yet to begin producing anything, so it's just getting set to, to begin. So you've got various information on this top level page. And you can easily just click on one of these tiles and get more specific information about that pack line. And so in this example here, this pack line has got multiple different work orders, some running, some queued you are able to filter what's shown so maybe I don't want to see any of the new or ready ones I really just want to see what's running or what's suspended or what's on hold so you can apply the filter and then this will filter it down that I've just got these two work orders sitting here so one that looks like it's about complete probably at the last step of the line and a new one here getting set up to begin at the beginning of the line so on an, either one of these work orders uh, you can certainly drill through the work orders to find out information about that. Um, also for the pack line I can see information about what are my entities. So what entities consist of this um, packaging line. And so these would be the different uh, entities that are on here. But my two different work orders, one's set up here at the very end packer phase and one's here on my labeler. So I've got some work orders running on these. And so again either way I could start back at my work orders, select one of these, get some information about it. So here's the various different entities that it's running on and you can see them all listed here which ones have already been completed. So I've got one still running out here on the labeler. So maybe I'll click on that entity and lets me go and find out information about that specific entity. So it's been running. Um, you can see its utilization events so it's currently in a slow test run state. Um, for that entity you can see other work that may be queued there to see what else is being set up for it. Um, what specific job we have here, if there is any production history for that job you would see the list of uh, good and bad quantities that have been produced for that entity. Um, some config configuration and if you want to monitor the line the operator can also go take a look at some of the states that the line's been in and you have your OEE performance availability quality type dials depending on what's been produced so far. So maybe we'll switch instead of the lines view you can also come in from an entities view. Um, currently I've got this filtered to just show my loading type equipment so any entity with the name loader. Um, but we can certainly clear out the filter and see a list of all the entities that are configured in the system and perhaps I'll need to select one of these here randomly just to see some information but it allows you to again drive into a specific either events, work queues, configurations. So here I'm looking at a specific utilization events that have happened on this filler. Uh, it's currently in a demand group which of no orders is the type. Uh, 
this one has a specific standard time of five minutes it's supposed to stay in that state yet it's been there for much longer than that as you can see by the percent of standard time is showing in red just to give you a warning that it's been stuck in this state far too long and same thing as the other ones you get some of the monitor page here you can see it's different uh, capabilities it's been sitting in this demand state since the, the in the current shift um, I can also switch and look at the previous shift you can also check and look at some of the information by work order so perhaps you need a specific work order again we've got filter options in case I don't want to see all my new or ready ones I just want to see the ones that are running so you can apply the filter see now which work orders where they're running so this one's running on pack line three I got two of them there I've got some here ready to go in pack line four and five uh, maybe I'll take pack line two, see how it's doing. So a lot of, again, the jobs have been running on many of these entities already. It's currently sitting out here at the palletizer. And you can see this is the same screen I was at before. So a lot of these have navigational movements between the different screens. And so this one has a lot more different events that have been happening so far in this past uh, eight hours is the way this one's been filtered currently. So you can see the different events. Uh, what work queue for this job has been so again no production on that one lately in the last shift and again the same sort of information you can see the monitor tab to see how well it's doing um, in this case it's got a number of different events in both running and demand state so we can click on one of those and get further information as to what types of events and the counts in this case the counts or we can switch to showing durations of each of these so how long have they been in each of these different states. Now let's take a look at some of the uh, configuration information. So again we can start back at the home page. Um, I can configure my lines, my entities, my utilization. Uh, work orders are more or just operational. So if I start at my entities and we'll take capper one and you can define um, various information. So there'll be a configuration tab assuming the user that's currently logged on has access rights to this entity and has the capabilities to edit entities. So I can go into the configuration for this entity, find out its name, what capabilities the entities have, um, any spare fields if you want, but configuration of its utilization. So what are some of my default reasons when certain transactions happen, like a job start, job ends. So the OEE one has some default production rates, your targets, the job tab again what type of reasons maybe when certain job things happen so like what's my default production reason when I'm doing a produce transaction or a consume transaction some of that if you want to limit what utilizations are allowed you can navigate through here and give it some allowable reasons that would be allowed and just pick a specific group so maybe it's the whole mechanical group that I'll allow so things like that that you can set and some MES attributes if you have any attributes configured that we can add and extend the configuration of this entity. So that's at the entity level and then from those entities you then build lines and we'll take a look here at my packaging line under its configuration again it's got a couple different uh, tabs so there's the general tab where I get my basic information of what's its name how many work orders can be running, what's its default batch size when I create a work order, create a job. But what's more interesting is the layout. How do I configure the line? So what are the various pieces of the line? So here again I'm showing the line definition here. Um, but it goes from the loader to the washer. There's three fillers in parallel, uh, capper, label, pal packer, palletizer, so it goes through. And so some of these you'll see some additional uh, icons on the definitions here. So an example, this one here can be the bottleneck. Um, this one here is my production source. So we have one entity that can be the production source where we get our production counts. In this case where all these are marked can be bottleneck, the system will calculate while we're running to determine which entity or perhaps you know line position if it's all these entities has the lowest production rate and we'll flag that one as the bottleneck source. So when I'm looking up here at the top, and I see for pack line 01 what's my current reason is planned maintenance that will be coming from my bottleneck entity which in this case is packer 01 so right now packer 01 has the slowest production rate that's my bottleneck it's in a planned maintenance state so that gives me my state for the entire line 
So that's what these things use. And there's different options if we click on there that I can uh, you know, just remove the entity completely from the line, set it as the source of production counts, mark it as being the bottleneck, or specifically it cannot be the bottleneck, so don't even use its calculations. It's never my bottleneck. So some configuration settings that you can flag on your various entities. And then the last configuration item for a line is just who has access to that line. So who has the ability to go in and start a work order on the line, say something along those lines. And then the last piece to really set up is my downtime. This is a performance system. So what are my different reasons, reason groups, and states? So here I've got some examples of the hierarchy that you can configure. And then within that, for a specific reason, what's its description? What state does that fall under? Um, do I want to apply the defaults for the running state to all my settings? And some of your various settings that we have down here are very similar to what we've had in the past. Uh, this is also where I can define the maximum duration. How long does it stay in this state? And if it does, do I want to automatically switch to a new reason? So say uh, a running one's not a good one. Let's pick a downtime group. And if I get my electrical, so maybe I sit in this one for more than 60 seconds, is the way this says. Right now I have no new reason that it automatically switches to, so it gets flagged as being in a severe state. Or I could pick another reason that once it hits more than 60 seconds in the state, then drive it to a different one. So it's a, it's a way of uh, managing your, your downtime reasoning in groups. And states are really similar, um, but they just have their default uh, states, the colors that you can set them to, some priorities, and then whether they are downtime or runtime type groupings. And these utilization states have a bunch of the default values that you can push down to utilization reasons. So hopefully that gives you a good summary of what's available in Wonderware MES performance for the web.